Hi, my name is Ron. And my name is LaShawn. Welcome back to the Three Minute Marriage Moment. Well, this week we got a good question, a continuation from almost last week, but we got something, a little twist to put in there. Yeah, last week we talked about communication being the number one issue in a couple's relationship. Today we want to talk about what we found out to be the number two issue, which Mm. is selfishness. Mm. She done hit the nail on the head. And it's amazing how there are so many selfish people in a relationship. Mm. People are always talking about me, myself, and I, but not about us no more. And that's the thing we can't understand. How how do couples get to that point, Sean? I think over time, um, we get out of the habit of serving one another. Remember, marriage is a ministry. It is an opportunity to serve one another with your gifts, your talents, your possessions, your body. And all of your treasures, you know, and and we agree to forsake all others and share with one another. But somewhere, just a little bit in the marriage, that record changes. And we begin to think about me. Me. And the sad part about that is we start saying about, well, what about me at the job? Mm -hmm. What about me at the house? I'm taking care of the household. I've been doing this. Matter of fact, I've been cheated out from going to school. I've been Ooh, cheated out from doing this. The regrets. Yes. When you think about the sacrifices that you've made to mm. choose your maid and to build a family and wealth or whatever it is you're trying to do together, sometimes we end up regretting that, and now it becomes the spouse's fault, and we just begin to talk about us. I remember six weeks into our marriage, you know, uh, waking up late, And trying to get ready for the next day. And I asked my husband to help us. Help me get breakfast and everything ready. And he's like, oh, I'm fine. I don't need lunch. And I was mad as fire. Do you hear me? I was mad as fire because I thought we were a team. Somehow I had this expectation that we were going to do everything together. And if I needed help, he would help me because I was willing to help him. Well, it wasn't the case. And after that, I, I really began to cry. And I said, what did I get myself into? I'm an only child, so uh, naturally, you know, I'm, you know, more self-centered. I'll be totally honest with you. Yeah, as you heard, she said, only child. See, only child carries a lot of selfishness. They tend to want themselves to be taken care of. They want this to be theirs, that to be theirs. Well, you used to have this stuff yourself. I know, I know, but she has gotten better, praise God. But, you know, it's a learning moment because you learn how not to be selfish and you learn how to outserve each other. Right, and that's that's the key, is outserving one another. I know frequently, and we purposely do this, we just don't let our marriage go on autopilot. We sp- pick times to outserve one another. We call it a love bank challenge. And we write down things on a slip of paper that we want each other to do. For one another to give us clues or hints and what it does is keeps us on our toes and keeps us focused on what brought us together in the first place doing the things that he likes for me to do or saying the things that he likes and naturally of course I get what I need um, and I'm very pleased with that and I'm truly pleased with it so the challenge that we're going to give you all this week is the love bank challenge For those married couples, sorry singles, but this is just for the married couples this week. But what we need for you to do for the couples, we want you to take a piece of paper, five pieces of paper until the next time and strip them down. On each sheet, you write down what you want that person to do for you for that day. But it has to be done within that day. So for an example, my wife may say, I want flowers throughout that day. I have to get her flowers throughout that day. And so what you want to do when you write them down on each piece of paper, exchange it. But hear me what I'm about to say now. Do not look at them. This is a surprise for each other. It almost kind of reminds you of a raffle. You have one item or one thing that you want to, to do for your, you want your spouse to do for you. And you need five sheets, right? Five sheets. Okay, you fold them up. You put them somewhere. And every day you pick one. It's kind of like your daily vitamin, so to speak. Yeah. And I promise you, as you begin to purposefully sow into one another with a grateful attitude and and an attitude of blessing, the end of that week is going to be very precious and it will make your week so much better. Yep, so do that. Now, singles, in case you're looking, if you want to do this, find maybe like your mom, your brother, your sister. do it with somebody in your family. Yeah, and do it with them. Just tell them the same thing to you. You want to do a challenge for the week. And do that. And that'll take the selfishness out, but now what you're doing, you're doing active quality time. Well, thank you so much for listening to us, and we will 
get back with you, or you can hit us back on www.songsofsolomonri.com or on Facebook at Songs of Solomon Relationship Institute. Also, if you're in the Detroit area, you want to join us this weekend, August the 15th, you can join us at Sportway of Westland, which is our uh, entertainment complex. And we'll love to see you there. It's for engaged couples, dating couples. Just join us this weekend. God bless. So come on out. God bless you. We love you. Peace out. Peace out.